Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Kitty Cat's Cake, an adaptation of an Aesop's fable written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Kitty Cat's Cake Once upon a time, the animals in the forest decided to throw a huge party. They were celebrating the ending of summer and the turn to fall, and it was quite an extravagant affair. They draped streamers from the trees and they bounced like rainbows from limb to limb. They painted pine cones and studded them with shiny rocks so they twinkled in the sun. Everyone had a party hat, even the big old bear, and there was a truce among the animals so they could all party in peace. Of course, the best part of the party was the food. They had cleared off an old stump from a colossal tree a dozen feet wide, and every animal brought something to munch on. The bears brought berries by the barrel. The rabbits brought carrots all chewed into fun little shapes. The raccoons brought chocolate they'd stolen from the trash, and the cats brought the wild herbs they loved to smell. On and on, the different animals came, all laden with their food, and they danced and ate all day and night. The next morning, two tubby cats came sniffing around the stump. One was orange and white, and the other was gray and black, but both had bellies that yawned towards the ground. Do you think there's still some food hiding around here? asked the orange cat. His name was Tiger but he was the gentlest house cat that had ever lived, except around a plate of food. Well, there has to be at least a nibble, said the gray cat. Her name was Misty, but unlike the fog, she was quite dense and easy to spot. The two prowled around the clearing where the party had been held, munching on crumbs and looking for something better to eat. They were just about ready to give up, when they crawled under a prickly shrub and found their treasure. A cake, said Tiger. Look, someone dropped a whole cake under here. Oh, Misty said. She crawled under with her friend, and together they wrestled the cake out from the prickers and onto the soft grass. It even still has frosting. Should we eat it right now? Tiger asked, breathing heavily. I think we should, but we need to split it in half first, said Misty, eyes wide and full of cake. I can split it, Tiger said. He found a long, thin stick and used it to cut the cake. When he was done, he put half in front of Misty and half in front of himself. At least, kind of. Hey, Misty said. Your half is like twice as big as my half. What kind of cutting job is that? This isn't fair. I don't know what you're talking about, said Tiger. They're basically the same. The two cats looked at the two pieces of cake. One was clearly much, much bigger than the other. Fine. If they're basically the same, then I'll just take your piece, Misty said, reaching for Tiger's. No! The other cat said, quickly pulling his away. The two narrowed their eyes and began to hiss at each other. It might have turned into a full-on catfight if not for the timely arrival of a friendly monkey. Hello there, cats, she said, rubbing her own round belly. She'd eaten quite well at the feast and, like the cats, had come back hoping to gobble up some forgotten treat. That's a beautiful cake you have there. Can I ask why you have it all split in half like that? It's a terrible thing to do to a cake. We're splitting it, said Tiger, and not with you. Yeah, said Misty, except you don't know how to split things, Tiger. You're not fair. The cats started to hiss and snarl again. The monkey looked at the cake and the frosting and felt her stomach rumble. She knew she had to have a piece, but how to get it? How to sneak some cake from these fussy felines? Aha! Say there, kitty cats, she said. 
I see you're having a hard time splitting that cake up. Yeah, said Tiger. And why do you care? Yeah, said Misty. We aren't sharing, so why don't you make like a banana and split? The monkey leaned back against the tree, hand to her chest like she'd just been gravely offended. A banana remark? And accusing me of wanting your food? Absolutely not. I just wanted to let the two of you know that I happen to be the finest, fairest judge in all of the forest. I'm absolutely famous for my ability to make things fair and even, but if that's not interesting to you, she started to leave. Oh, wait, said Tiger. Maybe you can help us out. Misty nodded, her rolls jiggling and wiggling. Yeah, we need someone fair, because this guy doesn't know how to split things evenly. Just look at how much bigger his half of the cake is. He basically gave me a slice and then took the rest. Oh, it's not that bad, said Tiger. Okay, then I'll take your piece and you can have mine, Misty said again. No way! See? See, he's not fair! The monkey laughed. This was already going better than she could have hoped. I see the problem, of course. If you'd like some help, I'd be happy to climb on down there and make sure you both have an even amount of cake so it's all fair. More than fair. It'll be super duper extra fair. The fairest it could possibly be. The puffy cats looked at each other for a long time. They were wary of anybody coming close to their precious cake, but they did need help. Okay, you can come down here and help us split it fair, Misty said. The monkey nodded and flipped off the tree and onto the ground. She waddled over to the cats and eyed the two pieces of cake. Yes, yes, she said. Definitely not quite right. She picked up a piece in each of her arms and pretended to balance them like a scale. This won't do at all. One piece is clearly bigger than the other. I better sort this out right now. She took the bigger piece the tiger had cut for himself and took a huge bite. The cake was chocolate and the frosting was some kind of buttercream and it just tasted like heaven in her mouth. Misty purred as she looked at the pieces. Now hers was bigger than Tiger's. Well, that seems better then. Give me my piece back now, won't you? Hey, Tiger said. That's not fair at all. Now hers is bigger. I thought you were supposed to be fair. The monkey held up both pieces in front of her eyes and squinted close. She licked her lips and squinted and weighed and wobbled and huffed. You're right, my ogling orange butterball, she said. Hers is bigger now. My mistake. Let me just use my excellent powers of fairness to make them absolutely exactly even for you. She opened her monkey mouth and took a bigger bite out of Misty's piece of cake. It was moist and delicious, and it seemed to melt in her mouth. See? All fair she said, and she licked bits of crumbs and icing off her lips. I think my work here is done. Looks good to me, said Tiger, whose piece of cake was now bigger than Misty's again. Well, it looks bad to me, Misty yowled. His piece is bigger again. What happened to being fair? I think you're just a big phony. Well, now, said the monkey. There's no need for that. Everyone makes mistakes sometimes, but what matters is how you fix them. Now, let me just give these another kalimberation. Kalimberation? It's a judging word, very fancy. You wouldn't have heard of it, said the monkey. She took up the cake pieces again, both barely more than a bite at this point, and weighed them in her palms. Well, Big Smokey, she said to Misty, looks like you're right. Let me just even these out here one more time. 
She took a bite of Tiger's, but then Misty's was bigger. So she took another bite of that one, and another, and another, and then there was nothing but a single bite left. And whose piece is that? Misty asked. Well, I guess this last piece is mine. It's only fair I should get a taste after all the help I've given you. The monkey tossed the last bite into her mouth, and then she licked the frosting off her paws. All right, then, she said, wiping her fingers off on her fur. Now there's no doubt about it. They are 100% completely and totally even. The two cats looked on, whiskers drooping, eyes wide. But, but, aw, Tiger stammered. But you ate the whole cake, said Misty. Oh, I guess I did, said the monkey with a mischievous grin. But look on the bright side. Now you don't have to argue about who gets which piece. Yeah, snarled Tiger, because neither one of us gets any piece. What did we do wrong? Misty said. It was your idea, said Tiger. I had it all split nice. Split nice? It was totally unfair. With the cats distracted by arguing with each other, the monkey snuck back up her tree. Well, now the monkey ate it all. They turned to look and saw that the monkey was already up and away. Hey! Get back here! You owe us cake, said Tiger. Sorry, said the monkey. I have other creatures to help in other parts of the forest. She paused for a second on her branch. But just for the future, when you want to split something fair and square, have one person cut it, and then the other picks which half they want. Get back here, Misty shouted, but the monkey was off swinging deeper into the forest. Well, I guess that's what was fair, said Tiger. Fair? Misty shouted. Tiger, she tricked us. It was never about being fair. Oh, said Tiger. That cutting and picking thing would work pretty well. Misty sighed, her big belly bubbling. I guess we'll have to remember for next time, she said. Come on, let's go home and get some dinner. I love dinner. Me too, Tiger. Me too. And the two cats, still round and just a little hungry, made their way home. The End Thanks for listening. 